G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we're going to have a look at the long-awaited video of the F4F early, that is the F4E modified for use for the Luftwaffe post-World War II, and uh, it's kind of interesting. We're going to have a look at sort of how it performs, and then we're going to compare it to one of the other planes in the game, the F4E, which is highly, highly similar to this plane. But before we do that, of course, a word from our sponsors. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. We've just about heard it all when it comes to Raid, but no one I personally know has taken the time to give it a try. So for this sponsorship, we're doing something different. We're going to take a look at some gameplay. Raid is a turn-based MMO, so if you remember games like Heroes of Might and Magic 3 from way back in the day, then Raid will be fairly familiar to you. Different abilities from different champions trigger combo moves and provoke reactions, and the best combination of these will win you battles. It's actually quite an enjoyable concept, and I'm personally interested in sinking what little spare time I have left into Raid. As for when I'm busy making videos, or giving the cats well-deserved attention, Raid has an auto-attack mode which can allow you to grind while AFK. It's kind of like a RuneScape bot, but actually built into the game. Raid has just released the Shadow King faction based on the traditional Asian folklore characters and have a new Doom Tower rotation with two tough bosses, but you'll need to Master all of your brain cells to defeat. To net yourself a nice little head start, click the link in the description below or scan the QR code for a free epic champion, Jotun, who is well suited for the Doom Tower, 100k silver, 50 gems, and 3 ancient shards for some champions. This offer ends in 30 days, so go on, click the link, or Muffin never gets any of my donut socks ever again. Thank you, of course, to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video, and of course the community for being so uh, understanding and, and kind when it comes to taking sponsorships. Uh, I really, really appreciate that, guys, and I hope you don't mind the sponsorship video. That being said, of course, I actually don't mind the game, so if you want to try it out, by all means, click the link, and that always helps me out in the long run. So, F4F early. We are basically having a look here at a cut-down version of the F4E, and uh, it is kind of cut down, but it's also kind of different at the same time. So, the main differences are this is uh, basically an F4E in the American tree without AIM 7s, without countermeasures, and without, uh, or with the addition rather, of those extra gun pods, uh, and of course the wing slats. So, you have a couple of extra ordnance options here compared to what you might normally get. I believe this thing doesn't come with uh, the uh, bullpups, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. This thing is basically a lighter F4E, and when I say lighter, I also mean lighter on the armaments and, of course, the avionics as a bit of a trade-off. Now, is that trade-off really worth it? Well, you can kind of tell by the way I'm playing this plane. The way the F4 Phantom traditionally works is by being the superior fighter, kind of like the uh, American props. You get your altitude and you force your opponents down with, uh, in this case at top tier, radar guided missiles, or alternatively you burst up towards your opponents in something that has a high climb rate. Now, the Phantom here doesn't really have the best of both worlds, in fact it's kind of got the worst of both worlds, where it doesn't have that amazing ability to burst up and retain so much speed, because it doesn't have an amazing climb rate compared to the MiG-21s, and of course, it has about the same climb rate as the other F4 Phantoms in the game, so it's not really much to write home about in that respect. The Phantom also kind of suffers in its ability to dominate at high altitudes, because it doesn't have that AIM-7 Sparrow combination, and of course, if you do decide to go up to high altitude, you don't unfortunately get the level of uh, protection that is offered by the countermeasures. Sadly, this thing kind of gets left in the dust, and it's pretty unfortunate because this plane is fairly capable otherwise. It's actually fairly good in a first turn, and that's one of the things that you might want to use the most of. So, moving on to the gameplay here, I have a Phantom that is not really paying attention. It looks like he's trying to spam his AIM 7s, and he is very much caught off guard. At this type of range, your missiles are really not going to uh, be fooled by things like flares and countermeasures. So, at this distance, it's practically a guaranteed kill. Now, for those of you with a bit of a keen eye, you might have noticed that I did struggle to get that missile off due to the load factor reportedly being too high. 
Now, I have played the F4E recently, and I have also played, obviously, this thing, and I have noticed that there is a significant difference in the ability to launch a missile while turning. Now, my, my uh, sneaking suspicion here is that the F4E pulls less Gs than the F4F because of the wing slats and because of, I believe it's light construction, but I'm not entirely sure. And as a result, you will actually hit the load factor, meaning the amount of Gs that you can pull for the missile to be able to be safely launched off the rails. And uh, in that case, you basically have to pull less. So it is a little bit frustrating and it does take a little bit of time to get used to, but I have managed to pick up a couple of sneaky little kills here. Also notice the amount of speed that I'm bleeding in these turns is highly significant. Uh, and of course, at top tier, and in fact, just all jets in general, energy is a really important part of your dogfighting regime. Having that ability to stay, stay fast really makes the difference between life and death. In this case here, I am sort of turning around and using my uh, slats a little bit, and these have the potential to get you out of a sticky situation, and can even allow you to keep up with the heavier MiG-21s, but at the same time it leaves you with the ability to bleed so much speed that it makes you a vulnerable target when you've taken one too many turns. So what you have to figure out is, do you want to stay turning, and if so, how much more turning can you can you bear before your plane gets absolutely swept over its, uh, its capabilities. And unfortunately with the F4F, because you don't have that ability, that sort of get out of jail free card that are countermeasures, you don't really have the ability to fart ass around a lot. You have to be extremely careful with who you engage. And that goes for just about every plane on the map, being J35Ds, F4Es, Mirages, MiG-21s. You have to be careful of who you engage because if you piss off the wrong person, you're basically going to suffer very, very significantly. Now, speaking of significant, one of the things that it can do quite well is pull Gs. And when you pull a G sort of set in the right direction and then switch it over uh, at, a, at a right angle, you can throw off the uh, missile tracking because some of these missiles don't have a great track rate. Uh, I mean, most of them have a pretty good track rate relative to, say, the 9B, but of course, they might not be able to track things like uh, an F4E that is very bank or banking very, very hard. Now, this one here decides he wants to use flares, and of course, the key knight among you can see the gun pods. Now, I am trying the gun pods out here for the first time, and I don't think it's worth taking the gun pods. So, it's just, it's just very fat. It, it do be thick sometimes, and sometimes too much ordnance is, uh, you know, a massive limiting factor. And it's okay, like, you can get some cool shots, and like this situation here, I managed to set on, no, not quite set on fire, but I managed to critically hit an F8U. So, there are some benefits, of course, but nothing that can't be really done with the Vulcan in the nose. So, I don't really advocate for this type of uh, ordnance loadout. I think I would much rather prefer just having a single brute instead of three. As you can see, the A7D is still able to pull out of the way, even in a situation like that. Part of that, of course, was poor gunmanship, but uh, we'll let that one slide just because it's, uh, you know, it's going to be on YouTube. Nah, I'm kidding, of course, but um, it is very, very difficult to get your gun on target for the uh, more subsonic or the slower types of planes that are in this uh, matchmaker. Now, I managed to blast out the uh, F4E with the Brute, and of course the uh, F8U decides he wants to oof as well. Now that T2 isn't going to survive much longer because he's going to get a missile shoved right up his booty hole. No he's not, he's getting guns shoved right up his booty hole, and uh, that's a good enough W for me and the team. You see, most of these situations here where I'm doing well, I have a fairly large amount of teammates to back me up or the enemies are quite distracted. Now this A7D is an absolute done deal simply because he has so many enemies to distract him. In the case where you're one-on-one -on -one against something like a Mirage, something like a MiG-21 or even other Phantoms, you are at a disadvantage simply because you pull so much and you don't accelerate back that energy as much as you would hope to. 
Not only that, you don't have those flares and countermeasures, so taking a dogfight against a single enemy could ultimately result in a 2v1 that you don't want and uh, ruining your day. I've had that happen way too often in this plane, and for me, it is kind of stressful to play. I have been, you know, mentioning a couple of interesting things about this plane, but overall, in my opinion, I genuinely don't think it is a great 10.7. However, I do believe it is a great event plane. Now, event planes are not really supposed to be meta-breaking or, so, oh, sorry, they're not meant to be ground-breaking or meta-shaking. And uh, that's the kind of rule that I think is best to base your uh, event vehicles off. So, with that being said, is it a decent plane? I guess for an event vehicle which is not meant to be ground-breaking or meta-shaking, it's uh, pretty, pretty good, honestly. It's not that bad a, uh, a deal in terms of that sort of stuff, but honestly, as a sort of tech tree plane or as a, as a plane that you might consider spending real money on, I don't think it's worth it. I think when we take a look at the F4E, for example, I think this is a good example to sort of show the capabilities in a what I would call similar situation where I don't have as many enemies looking for me. Uh, the extra missiles and the ability to, to dominate from high altitude really makes the difference. Having that sort of ability to force your opponents down instead of having to wait for them to come to you actually makes the enemy panic a little bit and can bring you a lot of good, good stuff. And in terms of good stuff, I mean a pretty high kill game. We're going to have a look at that here. So, would I actually recommend spending any money on it? No, if you haven't already gotten it, don't buy it. I can almost guarantee you that in the next patch, or in the next couple patches, we're going to have another F4 that is uh, going to come to the German tree. I would almost put money on it that it's going to be better than the event one, or at least it's going to be a massive side grade where you're going to have things like Mavericks and... Uh, uh, and all those types of goodies that are really good for ground battles to go with your Leopard 2 PL or your Leopard 2 A6. So I would hold off, honestly, from buying the F4F if you want to spend real money on it, but it's uh, it's up to you at the end of the day. If you're a collector, then by all means, collect away. So while, while you guys might be collecting F's, uh, 4Fs, I'm going to be collecting enemy planes, particularly those of the Russian variety. There's a MiG-21 looking very, very fine, and it is not so fine in a couple of seconds here, just as the AIM-7 decides it wants to hit. AIM-7 in, and SU-17 is our next target. We're prepping an AIM-9J straight for the SU-17, who's going straight down, which allows the AIM-9J to lead its target very nicely and provide me with kill number two. So, I have a decision here. Do I go and help the enemies or the allies that are below me, or do I wait a little bit for this MiG-21 here who's coming back to the battlefield and sort of slot in behind and see if I can do some damage that way? Now that I have all of the enemies at low altitude, I have plenty of opportunities here to uh, try and get myself some lovely little kills. Unfortunately, the MiG-21 decides he doesn't want any of that fun stuff, so this MiG-21 here is going to get some instead, and the other MiG-21 has decided he wants to turn in front of me, which is an excellent idea for me, giving me a nice little double and putting me on kill number four. Right, now the situation here looks a little bit hairy, but we're going to break it down nice and slow. There are plenty of enemies, all slow, all in a bundle, and we have basically enough missiles, guns, and uh, ammunition to deal with the threat as it comes to us. MiG-21 here looking very fine, but unfortunately not really going to present an easy target, so what I'm going to do is slot in behind with a little bit of guns, nothing too serious, and I keep going straight, keeping the speed up. Of course, not having those wing slats to, uh, I will say, bleed all the energy, MiG-19 there, looking very toasty in a second, and of course we are going to get a nice little kill on him for the ace. The MiG-21 Biss comes in, go for the brute, and of course critical hit him. See, this is the type of stuff that you can really pull off when the enemies aren't watching, and in my opinion, this is way more potent than any F4F is ever going to be, even in the best hands, even in the hands of pilots like Defen or, uh, you know, those that are more than better than me. There are plenty of pilots that can do great work, but I think the Phantom is overall a more capable plane, the F4E specifically in the American tree. So, 
MiG-21 here looking again very, very fine. And I'm trying to get a radar lock here just to try and use my AIM-7s, but I don't think it's really going to happen. And it looks like he wants to go for a weird head-on, not a head-on, and then I just pull out. I'm not having any of that shit at all. Go up into the vertical, storing that energy, of course taking a little bit of neg-G in that turn there just to slow down the turn and re release that uh, G-lock on my uh, pilot. So going for again, a little bit of brute, a little bit of a spray, plenty of ammunition in this uh, F4E. I think it gets less if I'm not mistaken, but again, a fire, very easy kill, and of course there are one or two enemies left, leaving me with a pretty handsome amount of uh, kills, and of course, all thanks to my ability to force down my opponents. Now, in a case where you aren't able to force down your opponents, you can use those remaining two AIM-7s to either try and do so, or to kill them, or to force them into a situation where they're compromised, and you can use either AIM-9Js, or some uh, guns, or of course some teammates, to finish them off. You see, the Phantom in this case has a lot more capabilities, and those missiles really make up the difference. It's important to consider the amount of missiles when you're looking at balancing a plane, and of course the F4E, in my opinion, is a fairly well-balanced 10.7. There are plenty of people that will say the MiG-21 is better, there are plenty of people that will say the F4E is better, but really, really, deep down inside, we all know that the PO2 is the best plane in the game. However, the PO2 is not going to save the Phantom or the F-104 from uh, getting an absolute hammering here. The uh, Hunter here goes in for the shot and, uh, and misses. <laughs> I think it would be the uh, the pull on the Hunter being a little bit dodge, and unfortunately the F-104G does not dodge my uh, shots there, giving me 7 kills. Now, I don't get these types of games very often, but what I do get are 4 kill games where I can basically let off a bit of steam and control the battlefield in a way that the F-4F early can't. So this is the type of thing that you're missing out on in this kind of plane. It's not an easy plane to fly, the F4F, but when you do get good games, it's pretty okay. And of course, you can always use it for bombs in tanks RB. But don't go bombing bases in air RB, it is really bad for your health. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you found something interesting in the video. And of course, thank you very much to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring the video. Thank you very much to the community for allowing me to do so. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciated your time. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.